Uh, so this is Workstream's inaugural webinar uh, as a part of our webinar series that we're hoping to do to help educate um, and to help provide guidance for those folks who are looking to hire hourly workers and ensure that they're getting their best practices, the best tips, the best software to do so. So the first one of our series is called Five Best Ways to Hire Hourly Workers, which is led by our co-founder and CEO of Workstream, Desmond Lim. To give some background on Desmond, um, like I said, he's the co-founder and CEO of Workstream, which is an automated hiring platform for companies hiring hourly workers. So Desmond in particular actually grew up with parents who were hourly workers, and he's very well acquainted with the opportunities and the challenges that many hourly workers face. Um, he's actually a graduate of Harvard and the MIT Media Lab. He's a former product mem uh, manager at WeChat, which is one of the biggest ma messaging platforms there is uh, globally at this point. He's also an investor at Dorman. He's actually currently based in San Francisco with his wife and now two daughters, recently became a, a dad to a second daughter. So we're really excited for Desmond to be walking us through these uh, five best ways to hire hourly workers for your business. Uh, and in particular, for, uh, you know, hourly workers can be for businesses who are, you know, restaurants, cafes, factories, franchisees, et cetera. So it covers a wide uh, gamut in terms of our workforce. So really excited for Desmond to be able to go through that. So uh, with that, I'll introduce uh, Desmond and I'll hand it off to you, Desmond. Hi everyone. Um, can you all hear me? <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. good. Perfect. Um, Neha, thank you so much for um, for that very kind intro. Um, it's, it's very nice to be able to, to be here today to actually share more with everyone. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm very happy to start and to move forward. Shall we, Neha? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, hey, hey everyone. So just to share with you already, right, one of the main reason why I'm actually focused on this space is that I actually grew up in this space. Both my parents, they were both actually hourly workers. My dad's a driver, my mom, she's a cleaner. They both only finished fourth grade. So I'm the first to go to school and to come to the US on my own. I'm actually from this Singapore, but I've been in the US now for the past seven years, um, came to the US for school. Uh, so uh, when I was back in this college, I founded my own Thai food restaurant selling Tom Yum, Pad Thai, curry. Uh, it was very fun, but it, it was also very tough having to hire people, manage them. And I think that was really where the roots of it all started. I saw that there was a huge gap in this space. And that is why for the past few years, I've been trying to dedicate my whole career towards this space, which is trying to help others, uh, being able to hire hourly folks better and also faster. So, uh, and maybe I will move forward now to this next slide to uh, share with you a bit more about the current land, landscape. Actually, Desmond, it seems like some of our attendees said that they can't hear you. Um, just if, oh. if, if everyone quickly in the chat could just let us know. If you could hear Desmond and the, the spiel he just gave, that'd be great. Um, can you all hear me now? Okay, sounds good. It seems, it seems like people can hear, so that's great. Um, Perfect. So awesome. Uh, so Desmond, actually for the, the folks that just didn't hear you, if you could just give a quick synopsis again of who you are, that'd be great. Just like a quick- Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be yeah. awesome, thank you. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. So I was sharing that both my parents, they are, they, they are both actually hourly workers. My dad's a driver, my mom's a cleaner. They both only finished fourth grade. I'm the first to go to school and to come to the US where I went to MIT and, 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 and also Harvard. Uh, when I was back in college, I founded my own Thai food restaurant. Um, selling Pad Thai, Tom Yum curry for three years. It was very, very fun, but it was also tough, as we all know, trying to hire, manage hourly folks. That is one of the things that is very, very tough. Um, and that is really why in the past few years, me and my team, we've been trying to dedicate our time towards this space to help to 
really be able to help folks to be able to hire, manage, and to really train them better. So, yeah, with that, I, I'm very glad to move forward. Yeah, just sharing quickly with you, all right. Um, over the past few years, I've learned that one of the huge gap is how do you engage with this hourly folks? How do you follow up with them? So what, what we have done is we use texting as a way to reach them and to engage them on their, on, on their phones because we found that that is the best way to actually reach them. There's also a lot of this, of this, of this automation in, in like our software that will really help you to post onto Indeed, Craigslist, but to also screen them and to also onboard them. So today I'm, I will be touching on three main topics as you all can see from here. So firstly, I will share with you all the quick overview, like how does it look like in terms of who are, who are actually hourly workers. Secondly, I will talk a bit more about like where can you hire them. Uh, finally, I will talk, I will, I will share with you all about this five best way of how do you actually hire and how do you find them? Yeah, so without further ado, I will jump right in. So uh, people may not know, but most workers in the US are actually hourly workers. That is more than 82 million people just in the US. Um, it's a really huge space. And if you try to see the space of this, of this actually, out of, of this actually hourly folks. It is not just in this restaurant cafes. It is in really every single space that you can think of. They are in trucking, retail, hotels, healthcare, farming, and more. I'm not sure if you all knew that most hourly workers in the US and, and really in the world, it is actually in this space of this, of this actually farming. So, um, so this is a very, very big space. And this is some of the challenges that we, that we face. And that is, as you all probably know, people don't show up even when they do. So there's more than 70% rates of no, no show rate. Uh, on this average, people spend more than 10 hours every single week trying to post on job boards, following up, scheduling, paperwork and more. And there is also very high churn. There's churn of more than 120% every year, which means that a chain of about 200 people have to hire one new person every single day. And, and that really comes up to a very high cost of more than 4.5 of more than 4.5 grand every single year to try to hire hourly folks. And that is just to hire one. So this cost can actually power very, very fast. So I will jump right in to share with you all what are the five ways that over the past 15, 20 years of being in this whole space, having hired hundreds, if not thousands of these of this folks on my own, I will share with you all five ways of how I think is the best way to actually hire hourly folks. First, the very first one is uh, people in this space, uh, they know other folks. So set up something called this employee referral scheme. So I would say that for every, uh, for every friend that your current crew brings in, you can think about giving them this bonus of between 300 bucks to maybe even $500 because we found that that, that just works very, very well. Uh, people who is in this space, they are very close. They are in the same chat group in the same group they probably live very close to to their friends too right so uh, people that you now hire they know other people who could be really good fit for you and i think that is one other thing that is very key um, if your current crew if they have a very good culture fit if they are someone who is actually someone that you like someone who shows up on time someone who works very hard Chances are, their friends that they know will be very similar to them, right? So, 
so I would say that that is a very, very good way to try to get them to find their friends. Moving forward, uh, there is so much channels now that we can try to hire people online. But I find that there is actually a huge gap in terms of this offline channel. Um, so what I would urge everyone to do is put up posters, put up stickers, and then put up, um, you know, this so-called flyers. Um, we find that that works very, very well. Um, so one of the things that we do on, on our team is we help every one of our, of our current clients to come up with, with, with this actually, this actually text to apply poster where we can print out and put it at your store. We find that that works very, very well because someone who comes to your store, they not only know your brand well, they probably stay very close to your store. And we found that people who stay the most close to your store, chances are they are someone who's a very, very good fit because they will probably stay longer, right? <laughs> uh, one other channel we found that is, think about putting up poster, not just in your store. You can go to um, the local supermarket, the local Starbucks. Uh, what we found that some of our current clients doing is they even go to this local, this actually laundry mat, uh, and that works very, very, very well too. So think about how you can create a name for yourself in terms of this actually offline channel. So thirdly, um, I know many of us are very used to posting online for jobs. Um, I don't know whether you all know, but the timing that you post, it is actually very key. So which channel that you post at and when do you post it? Do you post it on Fridays at, at, at 2 o'clock? Do you post it on Tuesdays at 3 a.m.? Right? So all this, it, 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 this will have a huge, huge factor in when is the best time that people will actually see your job posting. So here's the secret math. We found that posting in the early morning during weekday mornings, it is actually the best time. So what we have done on our team is we have a very strong team of this software engineers. We, we have built up something called this AI job, job posting. So with our AI software, we've been running tons of this, you know, data about where and when is the best time to post. And through going through all of this data, we found that early mornings is the best time to post. Uh, fourthly, um, as you probably know, uh, many hourly folks, they are part of a they are, they, are, they are part of many closed groups. Just like me and you, we are part of groups like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and more. But we found that two of the channel that works very well, it is actually Yelp and this Facebook groups. Um, we found that um, very much so in this Facebook, you'll find there's many, many groups such as like, you know, Uber or Lyft driver groups, but there's also restaurant groups. Uh, it could be San Francisco cafe groups. Uh, and there's just so many of these closed groups of people trying to find jobs. Um, there is many, many people who want to find jobs. And what is good about this Facebook groups is that many of them, they are actually pretty local. So they will be named after Boston cafe groups or Texas um, groups. So I think being able to post and share on many of these closed groups can be very, very powerful. Uh, I still recall that for my prior company, I work on this company, it's called Quick Force. Uh, so it's this actually on-demand moving service. Um, nearly every day I was posting on Facebook and Yelp, and I think also Angie's Lease, I was posting on these channels like more than 20 times every single day. <laughs> and that worked very, very well. Um, it's so funny because um, even to today, I'm, I am actually still part of like, let's just call it three to 400 Facebook groups that is trying to hire 
hourly folks, movers, drivers, and more. And what I found is these groups work very, very well. <laughs> Finally, uh, last but not least, um, I find that trying to hire, trying to plan this job fair or this hiring event, it works very well. Uh, try to choose a time, let's just call it one to two weeks from today, buy some food, buy some drinks, <laughs> and try to plan for some swag, right? Maybe some t-shirts and marks for your own brand. And we find that trying to organize this job fair with this fixed time where people can come in to just learn more about your brand, more learn about your team, and learn more about what you have to offer. We found that that works very, very well. Once again, now there's so much things that is, that is actually online. Um, and it, it is so funny. Just because there's so much things online now, now, now there is a huge gap in terms of this actually offline channel. So being able to organize this job fair, hiring event, and being able to actually, uh, be, be, being, being able to actually plan this event, it, it is actually very powerful because you will be able to uh, bring people in face-to-face -to, -face to kind of meet with your team. So, yeah. So, um, I would say those are the five top points that I have. Uh, I'll be very, very glad to answer any, you know, any questions that you all have. So, yeah. Yeah, so if everyone, if you have any questions, definitely drop them into the chat. I actually had a few people email some questions in advance. Um, so, uh, Desmond, if you're fine with it, well, well, we'll give some time for folks if they have any questions to put into the chat but I will go through a couple of the questions we've received uh, beforehand. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you. So we have one uh, from Austin who is asking uh, seasonal employees, do you have any tips for hiring them? Uh, are you trying to say like someone who comes maybe work just for the summer and go? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's quite a few tips for that. I, I, I feel like one of the very first tips is, it is very simple, but it is very true. Try to hire them early, right? So if you're trying to hire someone for the summer, hire them for this winter, know that you really have to start early. Start like two, three months in advance, right? That is the very first point. Second point is think about trying to tap into sources of these people that will only work for this summer. One of the sources that is very good is actually students because students only have free time in the, in the summer. So we found that um, that is a very good way. So try to hire people early and try to tap into sources of this, of this folks who, who could be a fit for this, for this time of the year that, that you need. So I, I would say those are the two top things that I, that I have. Great. Awesome. So another one, uh, came from Jaren actually, um, related to franchises. So for franchise owners who manage multiple locations, do you have tips on hiring across multiple locations for hourly employees? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so as you all probably know, right, one of the thing about this actually offline hiring, it is that um, every store can be very far away. So if you are this, owner with about four to five stores, um, you are actually having to hire them, not just in the same spot, but it, that will be across four to five stores that can be very, very far away. Um, so what we learned about that is um, trying to be sure that every GM on each store, that they are actually in sync. I think that is something that is very, very key because um, someone who comes to work at, work, 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 work at a store in this, Palo Alto may not be a fit, but um, she may stay closer to this, to, to maybe SF. So she could be a fit for that store. So one of the key points I have is like every GM in your team, they should be talking, they should be in sync, they should be on the same team. And that is very helpful to be able to share people across each store. That is the very, 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 very first point. 
second point I, I would say is trying to create this so-called consistent culture across every store. That is the part that I think can be perhaps quite tough because every store, they would actually have, have their own GMs. They would have their own leaders. So trying to create that same culture across every store can be very tough, but I think that is very, very key. So I, I would say those are the top two points that I have. Awesome. And it seems like we have one in the chat from Desireen who's asking, we get employees in the door, but they don't stay because we have so many stores in the area competing for workers. How do you get workers to grow and stay engaged? That's a great question. Um, so how do you get people to stay and stay engaged when there's many other brands who is trying to fight for the same, same like talent? So I would say that coming back to the point of really culture, I think that is really very key. Um, whether your team is five people, 50 people or more or less, I think trying to create a strong sense of this culture, a strong sense of this teamwork, it is very key because um, when you have a very strong, very good culture, people will stay, right? Being, being, being able to pay more is great, but I would say that um, people are always able to try to bring up your pay. So being able to create and really foster a very strong culture of teamwork or being able to help, 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 help others of this service, I think orders will be very, very key uh, to really help your team to be able to keep and to be able to train talent. I think that's the very first point. Second point that I have to like offer is try to provide training. We find that trying to provide training is very key. Not just to train people to be able to do their current job well, but being able to train them such that they will be able to try on new roles a new job in the next couple of months, in the next six months, um, send them for a class online, send them for school, right? We find that being able to offer training, being able to help your team to be able to um, learn new things and to become better over time, that is something that is very key. Awesome. I think we have time for one last question. So if anyone has anything, please feel free to put it in the chat. Otherwise, um, we have one question that had come before that I can uh, read out for everyone. I'll give everyone just a second. But um, in the meantime, Desmond, um, the last question we have is from Brandon, um, who emailed beforehand that uh, said, paperwork. Do you have any tips on what to do with all the paperwork that I have for my hourly employees and candidates? How do you keep this all organized? Yeah, no, I think that that's a really, really, really good point. Um, when I was doing my own Thai food restaurant, every week I would spend more than five to 10 hours just trying to run, run paperwork. So one of the things that I would say you do is try to consider trying out this software that can help you to actually sign online. I think being able to sign online, it is, it is, it is actually very key uh, because firstly, it will surely save you time. Um, Secondly, you'll be able to store all of this, all of this actually paperwork online, which would actually make them very, very safe. Um, so I, I would say that is something that you can try out. Um, and just to put in a very, very small, very small plug here, um, with our software workstream, we are actually able to like, you know, do that. So what we do is um, people are able to do everything via texting and via with your finger where you can sign with your finger from your phone. Um, so that will be very helpful. Um, so I would say that one of the key things that folks should, should think about is try to use some kind of software. Can be ours, can be, can, can be someone else's, but being able to sign things online, being able to actually bring everything online to your phone, I think that will be very helpful where you can store all of them in, in your cloud. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I don't think we have any other questions via the chat, but Desmond, thanks so much for uh, giving us so many great tips on how to hire, hire hourly workers. Um, for everyone who is on the call, we'll, we will be sending out a follow-up email that includes the recording of the webinar. Uh, please feel free to share it. And if you have any ideas for future webinars that you'd like to uh, have us cover off on, please definitely let us know. But thanks so much, Jasmine, for, uh, for um, leading today's session. And thanks so much for everyone else for attending.
Thank you, everyone.